Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. Senator Cynthia Loomis thinks that cryptos like XRP are more like securities than commodities. And uh, it's, it's very disappointing to, to, to find out that this is the case. And look, so I'm not mad at her. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. And look, I've actually been a fan of Senator Loomis to this point. And she's certainly pro-Bitcoin, pro, uh, very pro-Bitcoin, uh, perhaps to a fault. Uh, but I, I just thought that maybe that would have meant perhaps you know, she's kind of a broader a cheerleader for like the broader crypto space. And I'm not saying that she's against the rest of the crypto space, but she doesn't particularly seem for it. And you'll see by her comments that uh, she's she's got a little a little bit of wrong think in my humble opinion. And maybe she thinks I'm wrong. That's why. But I think she's wrong. <laughs> so we can respectfully disagree here. So nothing personal against her. But I am going to critique some of the ideas that she shared on national television as XRP was one of five cryptocurrencies on the screen while she was uh, just tearing apart the idea of pretty much anything that's not Bitcoin. Um, but look, before going further, I, I do want to be clear. I don't have a legal or financial background of any kind. I'm not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say are right. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. And shout out to uh, Pompous Maxi on Twitter, who, by the way, is not a Pomp Pompous Maxi. That's just his name. It's a good name. Um, anyway, tagged me along with a couple of my fellow uh, YouTubers, and he simply wrote, hmm, surprised this is her take. I find this disappointing. And so I was like, oh, okay, so what is this? And it turns out there's a 1 minute and 48 second clip on, uh, on Squawk Box here, uh, CNBC Squawk Box. And so I checked it out, and then I was like, oh, yeah, I got to talk about this. Uh, <laughs> I really got to talk. I got to, I, I've got some things to say about this. So anyway, Pompous Maxi, thank you for tagging me along with the others. Um, and that is, uh, that is the senator in question, Senator Loomis, on your screen right there. Um, and so what I did is I, I'm not going to play the clip because I tend to just not do that type of thing on my, my channel. <clears throat> Uh, just so that nobody can even claim that I'm, you know, infringing on copyright or anything like that. Not that it would even be a valid claim. I just, I don't want them to be able to make a claim. So I just, I just tend to not do it. But I did transcribe this. And so I'm going to share with you what was said. And I'm going to break some of this down along the way. Because this is, this is just incorrect thinking as far as I'm concerned. And so Joe Kernan, who is the host here, or at least he's a co-host of Squawk Box. Um, you know, he asked Senator Loomis... If some of the other coins, including the ones on the screen, again, XRP among them, uh, are going to last like Bitcoin will. He also asked if there should be regulatory oversight so that people aren't left, quote, holding the bag for some of these things, end quote. And so he's just uh, basically positing the idea that some of these coins perhaps might, uh, might go to zero and whoever hasn't sold before they go to zero, you're just in trouble. Because uh, it's not Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin's the only one that's going to last forever and because reasons, right? Yeah, I don't buy it either. And so here's what Senator Loomis had to say. <coughs> Excuse me. She said, I do think that Bitcoin is here to, say, to stay. And I think that a lot of others are not. I, look, let me just pause right there already to state. I think most of them go to zero too. That simple idea I'm not going to disagree about. It's the rest of what she said after that I take issue with. And she said the following. The fact that Bitcoin is fully decentralized and that some of these others were issued by a person or an entity that kept a large lot of the coin for themselves and then issued others to participate means they look a lot more like a security than a commodity. Oh. She's describing uh, a number of coins, but she, she is describing um, part of what is the history of XRP. I know a few individuals... Uh, did did create XRP, and then it was gifted to a company, and that it was a large per, large percentage. And so so right there, she clearly thinks XRP and other cryptocurrencies look more like securities than commodities. Now, mind you, in that same sentence, she was talking about how Bitcoin's fully decentralized, and then she talked about the distribution mechanism for cryptocurrencies. Uh, the distribution of crypto, mind you, like <laughs> it, it, it it frankly, like. That is not in and of itself what makes something a security or not. When you're talking about the four prongs of a Howey test and whether or not something is, is centralized, so that's what matters. You're talking about, is there a common enterprise? That's one of the four prongs of the Howey test. What determines whether or not there's something, uh, something is a common, if, if, is there a common enterprise at the heart of these cryptos or not? Well, is it decentralized? If something's decentralized, there's no power over it. How can you satisfy that prong of the Howey test that there's a common enterprise, that they don't have special powers over the, the cryptocurrency or anything like that? They don't. They provably don't. And so in the case of XRP, the quantity of, uh, of XRP being held by Ripple 
doesn't matter. It doesn't mean they have any special permissions over the ledger. And mind you, like some of these people, they make it out as though Ripple's done something greedy. Well, like Ripple, at a, like, the, the, fine, holding over half the, the supply from the earliest days. So they held over, they, they held over half the supply of a crypto asset that was worth zero dollars and zero cents. How greedy of them, right? It wasn't until humans were like, oh, maybe there's something to this. Oh, it's technologically superior to Bitcoin. There's all sorts of great attributes that people around the world decided they wanted to hold it because it's pretty cool and it's an improvement on Bitcoin or whatever their reasons are. It, it, it wasn't because of Ripple necessarily, right? Uh, and, and so the holdings, frankly, don't matter. And that also doesn't mean just because there's an entity that has a lot of, uh, of a cryptocurrency, that that does not mean, again, that there's there's because unless you're talking about proof of stake, that doesn't give any special powers over the blockchain. So I just I got to set the, the record straight here. Uh, like no, no disrespect to the senator as a person, but she is wrong on this. Like th this is not the right way of determining whether or not something is a security. It, it most certainly is not. Um, and then she also said the following. Bitcoin is clearly a commodity. It is digital gold. Gold. So I do think that having a regulatory framework within uh, which, uh, which this can exist and innovate, meaning this entire space of digital assets, but that protects consumers at the same time is extremely valuable. And then she said some other stuff in between, which I'm not going to cover because it's not relevant to this conversation, but she kind of came back to this idea. And this is how wrong she is about how stuff should be regulated. This really sums it up. <laughs> she ended up saying, ultimately, Bitcoin is the standard. Everything else has to be monitored differently because they are created differently. And I, I heard that, I just like, oh my gosh, face palm here. You're, so you're telling me that because Bitcoin is first, it is what it is, and everything else needs to be held to some sort of different regulatory standard? Are you sure about that, Senator? Because that doesn't make any damn sense to me. It really doesn't. Um, because they were created differently. Look, we don't know who the hell Satoshi Nakamoto is, but you can be damn sure that if this individual or the people, maybe it's a group of people, if it was known who they were, absolutely, the SEC would be coming after them as well. Because they put something out there, and even if they haven't benefited, we don't even know that for sure. Uh, what about that roughly 1 million Bitcoin that Satoshi Nakamoto has? What about that? What, what about that large quantity of, uh, of crypto that you say the creators hold? Uh, that, that that's a bad thing that makes it not decentralized. What about that? What about Bitcoin? What about 1 million Bitcoin held by Satoshi Nakamoto, which is provably the case? Does, is that something? And, and ultimately, when you talk about this idea of these, these, uh, these cryptocurrencies needing to be regulated differently, because in your view, they're created differently, meaning they're distributed differently. Well, let me ask you, Senator Lunas, what the hell difference does it make how they got into the wild once they're all into the wild anyway? Can you imagine when all Bitcoin is mined, you know, another 100 plus years from now, and then all the XRPs out in the wild already, like, what the hell is the difference? And even if you're talking about Ripple, if you consider XRP not out in the wild because Ripple has its holdings, well, eventually that's all going to get dispersed anyway, just about 100% of it, uh, if not all of it. So at, at that point, what the hell does it matter? They should be regulated differently? They need to be monitored differently? That's the word you use, but it's the same damn thing. Right. In what world does that make sense? How it's like it's like in her view, it's original sin to have uh, to not distribute it, to, to distribute a cryptocurrency with proof of work, which is slow and harms the environment. That's kind of what it looks like to me. And so I look at this and I'm just like, nope, this is wrong. This is not right. This has nothing to do with whether or not something is decentralized. And if Ripple doesn't have powers over the XRP ledger, and we know that's the case, then it's not centralized. It's not centralized. It simply cannot be a security. Abs that is a hard break right there. Full stop. Not a security. If it's a security, then why can't Ripple control? Don't you think, because don't you think Apple could, you know, if the company's going, uh, going, uh, like away, like that's not happening, but let's just, let's just say that it just disastrously failed. Uh, is the stock going to persist? Or like, are people just going to like somehow own the stock and then what, like, it's a thing that you have? Like what, what? Like this is not how this works. And so if Ripple, the company, were to go away, uh, you know, the, the XRP ledger would just persist on. You can also think about how Ripple, they have offered at least one amendment uh, to change the XRP ledger, and it was voted down. How the hell does that happen if something's centralized, right? And again, if something is centralized, that's key because that satisfies a prong of the Howey test then. But it's not. So this is silly. 
And so you can't you can't make a broad statement like this, Senator Loomis. And I understand you didn't literally say XRP, but you described it, and you need to think a little bit further at this. You can't just say every cryptocurrency that falls within this parameter of there's a bunch of it held by an entity means that it's centralized because you're wrong. You described XRP without saying XRP. It's the same damn thing, and you're wrong. That is it. So uh, no disrespect for you to you whatsoever. I just encourage you to think a little bit more broadly, because uh, you know every cryptocurrency that's out there that is decentralized is not a security. That that's the truth. It's they, they full stop. They are not. If they're not controlled, you don't satisfy the Howey test. Full stop. You know, it's just like think back to the Howey test. It's the same reason why you look back and like. The underlying, think about it, you talk about calling the underlying asset a security. Can you imagine the Howey test if the orange itself, by the nature of it existing, were declared to be a security? That's how ridiculous it is if you think XRP or any other cryptocurrency is, by the nature of it existing. You know, so I, I had to say my piece on this. I, I had to. I'm glad that there's a, another senator out there that's, that's pro crypto that is good, but it seems like she's gone too far in the direction of only bitcoin and so like she might be a maximalist bitcoin center and, and, and maybe not literally because she does say the broader crypto space but the way she talks about it doesn't it's kind of like oh yes bitcoin 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 oh, a little bit of other stuff it's like i don't get the sense that she cares about the little bit of other stuff the way that i'm seeing her talk it, it, certainly not in this clip anyway it's bitcoin and then treating them differently oh hell no absolutely not a different set of regulatory standards i mean fine she said a different a different way to monitor it by who a regulator so the regulator is going to treat them differently by monitoring them differently? Same damn thing. It's, it's, it's a distinction without a difference. I don't care. Use the word monitor. It, it, you're talking about regulators treating them differently. It's the same thing. It, it just is what it is. So anyway, I, I, like I said, I just wanted to say, say my piece on this. Nothing against her personally. Glad she's pro-crypto, but this is wrong thing. All right, I'm, I'm just saying. Let me know what you think below, but I'll wrap up here. I am not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.